This is the rhythm of the night. Oh, night. Oh, yeah. My mum was saying to me the other day that I should get my hair cut into a bob, and a part of me was like, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Kind of would be interesting, because I nearly always have my hair like tucked into things or hidden, but then I just can't commit, because it's already shorter than it normally would be, and I just, I just don't like it. You would think, after doing this for quite a while, that I would be all right at setting my camera up and knowing where to put it, but every time, I never know. <laughs> Okay, I think this should be all right. So today's video is coming fully from the heart. I haven't got any notes, I haven't planned it other than thinking about it on my walk this morning and it's come off the back of a consultation I had yesterday. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about five of the things I wish I had known when I started calisthenics. And just in case you haven't met me before or you're not sure how I got into calisthenics, I will give you a very, very brief overview. So, essentially, I got into calisthenics when I was around 27, 28, and that was coming off the back of never being active, never being sporty, having never stepped foot in a gym, not knowing about training techniques. I didn't even know what calisthenics was. I started calisthenics kind of by accident, to be honest with you. I saw an Instagram post of a girl doing a chin-up, and this is kind of when it wasn't that normal to see girls doing resistance training in the gym. This is, you know, probably about six, five, six years ago. Wait, what am I now? 33. So yeah, it was like five, six years ago. And I saw a girl doing a chin up and I was like, wow, that girl looks like an absolute boss. I want to be able to do that. And so I set a new resolution to be able to do a chin up. And I didn't know what to do to do that, but I just kind of started going up to the little gym in my apartment block and just trying to hang on a bar. And like most people, I found it extremely frustrating and very, very difficult. But for some reason, I just stuck at it and I just kept trying to do it. And after that, I kind of just fell into this massive black hole of body weight training and essentially what I now know as calisthenics. And I just fell in love with it. So much so that now five or six years later, it's my job and I do it at a relatively mediocre level. Let's just say I've been maintaining for the last year, so 2023 is the year to amp it up. But the biggest thing that I get out of calisthenics is just that I absolutely love it and I love introducing women to it and making women feel like they can be a part of it because it is a very male dominated type of training, which I think is awesome. Most of my friends that do calisthenics are guys and so I'm just super passionate about getting it out making women feel like they can do it, having fun, moving their bodies, feeling functional. That being said, it is also a very, very challenging style of training. Progress can be so frustratingly slow, so slow that you might think you're not actually making any progress. Personally, I find it mentally a lot more challenging than traditional resistance training. Using your body weight, you have to get a little bit more inventive. And then also I feel like you're just trying to defy gravity and that's a battle that you're just never gonna win. But like I mentioned, I am an absolute sucker for calisthenics. It's one of my true loves. And so I thought, let's rewind, let's take it back to when I started calisthenics and I'll share with you five things that I wish I had known when I started out. And the first one is, and I'm sure if you've done calisthenics, you'll relate to this one a lot, but it does get easier. It is a very challenging form of training especially if you're just starting out. It feels like what you're trying to do is impossible. And I remember when I was starting out, I heard a quote and I remember scoffing at it so many times. And it's along the lines of, what feels impossible now will one day be your warm up." And I just remember thinking, there's absolutely no way. Like, I can't even hang on a bar, my body weight. I can't imagine ever being able to pull my body weight up or even train for things like a muscle up or even do things like scapular pull-ups. I just don't ever see that being a possibility. Lo and behold, several years later, I was wrong. The little quote was right. These things do become easier. So the things that do feel impossible do become something that you'll do on a regular basis. And you'll be able to look back and feel so proud of where you've come from. But it does, at the time, seem super frustrating that it just feels like you're never going to be able to achieve it. So rest assured, you will make progress even if you don't feel like you're going to. And also, training does get easier. That being said, and this is what I kind of love about calisthenics, is that the level or the limit that you can take it to is kind of endless. And so if you meet somebody who has been doing calisthenics for 10, 20 years, maybe their entire lives, they are still at the same point on their journey as you, even if their exercises are more advanced. And they'll always come from a place of understanding the struggle. It's not just physically demanding, but it's also mentally demanding that you have to battle yourself, your brain, to keep pushing yourself. 
they will understand that. The other thing is, not only will the exercises in calisthenics that you're doing and unlocking new skills get easier, but also you'll notice it in real world applications. And this is something that, it kind of blew my mind, but when I started seeing it, it was so satisfying, but it kind of gave me that motivation and that fire in my belly to keep going and keep pushing my training because I noticed things like going up the stairs was so much easier, getting in and out of my car, taking the garbage out, picking up my cat, taking in the groceries, going to the airport with massive suitcases and God knows I've done that quite a few times. And when you notice that your day-to-day -day life and your body's functionality is becoming better, it's almost addictive. It's like, how much stronger, how much more capable can I get? It's such a good feeling. So know that you will also see it in real world application and you'll notice it outside of your training significantly too. Number two is calisthenics friends are the best kind of friends. I was super, super shy. I'm still fairly shy sometimes. I'm quite confident, but I also like keep myself to myself. But I was super shy when I started in calisthenics. I just did it in my home in my kitchen, in my lounge room. I set up a spare room eventually as my kind of workout space. I would never go and do it in the gym. Even if I saw someone doing it, I would never approach them and get talking to them. And actually, and I've mentioned this in a few of my videos, because by some divine intervention, I met a friend who did calisthenics and he reached out to me on Instagram and he brought me out of my shell. So his name is Kirsten and he ended up after several years going back to India and setting up a calisthenics park. And now he has two calisthenics parks, which is just phenomenal. And he's spreading the word in India. And it's just amazing that the community he's built over there. But when I met him for the first time, he was just starting out on his calisthenics journey too. And he was just such a hype person. Like every time I'd be around him, he was full of positivity. He had so much energy. He was an energy giver. He was one of those people that when you walk away, you feel better about life. And I can't thank him enough because he dragged me out of my shell. He took me to parks and he would always start conversations with people. And through that, I started to make friends who were doing similar types of training. And I really had an appreciation for just how amazing the calisthenics community is. Like I mentioned in my last point, regardless of where they are on their journey or where they are in terms of their strength and skills, everybody's kind of at the same level in terms of they're all learning something new for the first time because the options are endless. And so everyone is super supportive. They just want to see people succeed. And there really is nothing like an amazing Cali sesh where you've got people to spot you, push you out of your comfort zone, take you out of your headspace, challenge you in ways you probably wouldn't yourself, and just hang out covered in chalk barefoot. It's such a good feeling. So if you're starting out in calisthenics, I would 100% recommend trying to find some form of community or some classes or workshops or even a gym where there is equipment for that because you'll see people training it and spark a conversation with them because you just never know where it'll lead but what you will get out of it is you'll feel full of confidence it will take you out of your comfort zone you'll try new things that you probably hadn't thought of you will learn new stuff as well i've learned so much from people over the years and it just is an amazing community to be a part of that being said, I would say about 80% of my training I do alone, and that's great. I love training alone. Sometimes I just wanna put my headphones on and just get my head down and kind of grind it out. And sometimes I just wanna be super social and have fun and do silly things like try to do handstands on barbells and do movements that just look ridiculous because it's fun and it's lighthearted and you're just moving your body. In at number three, we have, it takes a very, very long time to learn skills. I went into calisthenics kind of ignorant and naive to what it was. I didn't know what the name was. I didn't know what the style of training was. I didn't know what the progressions were. I didn't know how long it was gonna take me to be able to do a push up or a pull up or a handstand or anything like that. I just started doing it. And eventually, obviously I managed to see progress and then I was able to actually be able to do the exercise itself and then start to level up from there. But had I known that these things were gonna take longer, would my journey have been a little bit different? That is an interesting question. I don't think so, because the skills that I'm working on now, which I know are gonna take a very long time, and in a way, that's kind of what intrigues me and pushes me to want to learn them even more. And when I say it takes a long time, I'm talking about a long time. It can be anywhere between six months to two years to learn a skill. And if you don't believe me, here's the Bible of calisthenics, overcoming gravity, and many of the skills state that it takes between six to 12 months, or six to 24 months to learn. So 
It is no mean feat to be learning these skills. It is challenging, but it is so, so worthwhile. I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people struggle with when they're just starting out in calisthenics is thinking that they're not making any progress or that it's taking them too long to learn a skill. It took me over a year to be able to do a pull up. It took me the best part of a year to be able to do a push up. And even so, when I did achieve them, my form was still not great. And even now, many years down the track, I have ebbs and flows where sometimes I can do six or seven pull-ups and I feel super, super strong and great. And then I'll have months where I struggle to even do them banded with good form. So it's just a constantly fluctuating journey. And I think you have to just accept that it's gonna be that way and try to embrace that and have fun with your training. All right, so number four is how powerful greasing the groove is. And you're probably thinking, what the heck? What is greasing the groove? Now I unintentionally kind of did grease the groove training when I was learning pull-ups. And again, I didn't know anything about it. It just coincidentally happened that when I look back, this is kind of what I was doing. But essentially, greasing the groove is doing an exercise to a much lesser extent than your max effort. Because you're not exerting yourself to the point of failure, you can do it a lot more often. So what that looked like for me, for example, is I had a little pull-up bar that I put on my door frame, and every time I'd walk through my door frame, I'd try and do a pull-up. I couldn't do a pull-up, but I would just hang on the bar, or I would try and pull myself up a little bit, and every time I'd try and pull myself a little bit higher, when I used to go to the gym at university, I was starting to go to the gym at that point, there was a pull-up bar, a little calisthenics area outside the gym on the way to the car park. And every time when I went to my session, I would do a little pull-up or try to. And I have so many videos, I'll put some of them in here, of me just shaking my head and getting so angry and frustrated that I still couldn't do one. And then every time I'd leave the gym, I'd try again and I still couldn't do it. But eventually, over time, it got easier and then I was able to do them. But greasing the groove is really powerful because not only are you making strength adaptations, you're gonna be building muscle, but you're also teaching your body the movement. And that's also a big part of calisthenics is like the proprioception, the coordination, and, and that body control and knowing where your body should be. So it really, really helps with that. But the biggest benefit is that you're doing the movement, but you're not mentally struggling because you're not pushing yourself to your maximal effort. For example, with push-ups, if you can do 10 push-ups against your kitchen counter, then multiple times a day, maybe you would work to about 40% of that. So you'd do four push-ups against your kitchen counter, or maybe try it on a slightly lower surface, and you'll just do this randomly. You don't need to warm up for it, but you can do it when your kettle's boiling, when you're putting the laundry on, just bang out four push-ups. You're not going to be struggling because you can already do 10, so you're not gonna be working anywhere near your maximal effort. For me now, it just simply looks like doing a pull-up every time I walk past my pull-up bar. And I notice that if I do that, I see my form improve so much and the exercise becomes so much easier over time. And again, I forget that I'm doing it, but then easily I could be banging out 10, 20, 30 pull-ups a day without even realizing. So greasing the groove is fantastic. And if handstands or any skills like that are a part of your plan in terms of what you want to achieve, greasing the groove is also really, really, really beneficial for these as well. So try and do a handstand against the wall or try and do one in the middle of the room if you feel comfortable to do so. And just keep doing it because the biggest thing is just practice, practice, practice and getting that airtime. So grease the groove. And then the last one, number five, before I lose any more light, it is getting a little bit dark. And that is something that I hear all the time. I didn't really think about when I started out, but I've become much more aware of and I understand a bit better now. And that is that if you have excess weight, it does not mean that you can't do calisthenics. This is something that I hear so, so often, essentially down the lines of I'm overweight or I have excess weight. Can I start calisthenics or do I need to wait until I've lost weight? Wow, that was a lot of weight in one sentence. Now, although I'd lost the majority of my weight prior to starting calisthenics, I still did have excess weight. And undeniably, being heavier when you're using your body weight as the form of resistance, of course, is going to make the exercise more challenging. However, if your goal is to lose body weight as well as start training, you're only going to notice that your strength to weight ratio is going to improve. And that means as you lose body fat, your strength, which you have been building off the weight that you were, is only going to essentially relatively increase. With calisthenics, you've kind of got your core exercises and then a lot of the skills are built out from those exercises. So we're looking at things like push-ups, chin-ups, pull-ups, dips, squats, like a hip hinge movement and a bit of core and maybe even posterior chain as well. Now with all of these exercises, 
there are tons of regressions and modifications that you can make to whatever level you are at in terms of your body and in terms of your strength and ability. So that is the amazing thing. You can modify and modify until you need to, and then you can start building up from there. So if you have a little bit of excess weight, it does not stop you at all. You're just going to work with the modification that you need to. Whatever feels challenging to you, you're gonna start there, focus on quality over quantity always, and start building out. Personally, I'm fairly bottom heavy, so when I carry weight, I usually carry it in my butt, in my thighs, in my hips, and this can make calisthenics a little bit harder, because when you traditionally look at people that do do calisthenics a lot, or as their primary form of training, they're kind of this shape, whereas they have really wide shoulders, they have a built upper body, because it is so much upper body, and then they usually have a little bit of a leaner lower body. So if I gain a little bit of weight, it always goes immediately to my lower body. Body. and I do notice that things become a little bit more challenging however that being said when there's a bit of a fluctuation and I might lose a little bit of weight I really notice that my relative strength has increased a lot so in a nutshell if you have excess weight do not let it put you off starting calisthenics I would say get stuck in work with the regressions and modifications that are right for you as I would suggest to anybody I should really take my own advice you warm up you make sure you're doing your stretching and your mobility work your flexibility looking after those joints and just just listening to your body. And those are my five top things that I wish I had known when I was starting calisthenics. I suppose in summation to this video, I just wanna say how much fun calisthenics can be and to try to avoid getting trapped in this feeling of having to nail the fundamentals and think about timelines and manage this journey. Whereas you could just simply have fun with moving your body, seeing what it's capable of, because you actually just might surprise yourself or you might not. There was definitely times where I saw a video of someone doing something like a pistol squat, for example. I was like, Psh, that's easy, I could do that. And then I would hold onto my TV unit and I literally would just plummet to the floor like a rock. And that is the beauty of calisthenics is that when you watch somebody who is good at it, they make it look so easy, like literally as if gravity doesn't exist and you get duped, you get fall into this false sense of security that oh, that's easy, I could do that, I can climb a rope, I can do a push up, I can do whatever it is that they're doing, super easy and then you try it and you're like, oh damn, this is actually really hard and that in itself is really, really cool. But to bring it back to what I was saying, when I started out for at least a year and a half, maybe even longer than that, I never followed a training routine. I, I never followed specific exercises that I was doing. I just basically greased the groove and I would come up with little movement patterns in my head and I would practice and practice and practice and put some music on. I would try things that I saw other people do and just had fun moving my body to see what it was capable of. And if you're a newbie to calisthenics, your body will adapt quicker than you expect. The longer you do it for, I feel like the harder it gets. And that's kind of a normal thing in training, like year on year, the more challenging it can be to build muscle, for example, or to make strength gains. So enjoy the newbie gains, enjoy experiencing a new form of training and just have fun moving your body because thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's given you some motivation or just feeling like you're not alone in the struggle because don't worry, the likelihood is I'm still having the same thoughts as you are even though I've been doing it for six years. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, drop them down below. I'd love to chat to you guys or if you ever wanna send me any of your videos, I would love that too. You can just send it to my email address because I'm just nosy, I'm a personal trainer, I like seeing it and it, and it just makes me so happy to see other people trying new things and moving their body. But anyway, before I keep rattling on, I will let you guys go. Thank you so much, I will see you guys in the next video. Happy training!